Thank you, David. I mean, it's hard to come after David. I mean, he has raised so many different. Um, I want to begin by saying that my my view of of um, ethics is. I see the, the need for the creation of what I call a space of dialogue on the campus, on the university. You cannot have an ethical university unless there is a space of, space of dialogue between different and among different stakeholders, which is completely absent on this university. Um, I mean, myself and David was invited to the Council of the University this morning to sit as observers. As president of the SA and as president of the GSO, we don't have a voice, we don't have a vote. Um, because we're told that the New York State law does not allow for that. Uh, well, I mean, I have written to the, to, the, um, to the governor of the state of New York and said, well, what is this? I mean, if we don't have this space, how is there any democracy? And how can we talk about democracy on the university? Um, so I see ethics on the university. If we are to have ethics on the university, we must be able to create a space of dialogue. In that, in that sense, I, I believe that decision making, the decision making process should be a, a socialized decision making process. I believe in a socialized world. I mean, and I have come to that belief, you know, as a child, when I was six years old, going to elementary school, I woke up one morning and looked through the, the window of my home to find a British soldier with a machine gun. That was my first, and that image has remained in my consciousness about the inequality that exists in the world. When I came to this university, in the first two weeks, the International Students' Office organized a lunch with the president. And I, for some reason or the other, they put me to sit next to the president. And what I said to President Defloor was, look, I cannot understand why a colleague of mine was arrested for playing cricket in, the, in one of the, um, the gyms on the university. Is cricket a sport that is banned in the United States? Is cricket a sport that is banned on the university? This student, a graduate student, was arrested for playing cricket in the university and charged in the courts of Broome County. Now, that is the kind of university that we have. The other question I asked her, I said, you know, we are a diverse campus. Tell me which kitchen on this campus I could feel comfortable in. We have no space of dialogue, no space of discussion. We have no space of comfort. I mean, in a diverse environment like this, this is the kind of discussion that faculty, administration, students' associations should be involved in if we are to have an ethical university. So we cannot speak of ethics in a vacuum. These are the issues that arises when we come to speak about ethics. Ethics for me, therefore, is based on a space of respect for each other. We have to have a space of respect. We're all different. We all come from different parts of the world from different ethnic groups, right? We are all part of some minorities. I mean, the, the Native Americans were, I mean, this land belonged to them, yet still they still live in reservations. That's an ethical question that should be discussed nationally, which, however, I looked at the democratic debate last night. It is not part of the national debate. The ethical question in relation to, to the Africans in Zimbabwe who were put in reservations by the minority whites is a national, real national ethical question in Zimbabwe. I grew up in a country where Indians and Africans were brought there as workers or as slaves and have been put in com perpetual competition with each other. And I grew up in a political atmosphere where these two groups are battling each other out for political space, where we have a world that is called democratic, where this so-called democracy have no space within it for the ethnic minority. It does not respect the rights of ethnic minorities. In the same way, this democracy does not, does not recognize the rights of the Native Americans. The university, there is no democracy on the university that recognizes the rights of the diversity on the campus. 
We can only discuss ethics, therefore, within the bounds of these practical things that exist, that we see on a daily basis. When we were invited, Margaret came to see us. I'm president of the Graduate Students Organization. And I said, yes, we would come. You know, I took this um, invitation to the, to the Senate of the, of, the, of the Graduate Students Organization, and the senators representing all the departments said to me on, on Wednesday afternoon, so what are you going to say? And I outlined what we should say. So what I'm saying here <coughs> is what I was authorized by the GSO to say. I'm not, these, these are not stuff I'm saying from the top of my head. This is stuff that graduate students would like me to raise at a meeting like this, at a round table like this, where you have faculty and others on this university. So, firstly, we would say that the GSO hopes that this is the beginning of a process on this campus towards finding ways of fight back against the neoliberal management and et ethic, the neoliberal management ethic within which the university finds itself. The university has become an, an animal to this neoliberal agenda that is generally at, 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 in force. This is the trend. And this has taken a grip on how things are done and how they happen on the university. And students and faculty have to understand that this kind of operation must be discussed. We must, we, must, we, must, we must discuss it and we must have a view on it. Because it is not helping the students, it is not helping the faculty, nor is it helping the university grow. I'm happy to be part of, to come here, the first time I'm in this building, officially, I was in front of this building in a protest where students um, were protesting. I mean, it's, I'm happy to, to see the, the facilities here. I wish we had the same kind of facility at the main campus. We have recognized that over the last five years or so, what has taken root here is a trend towards hierarchical decision making and hierarchical dictates. I mean, my friend here, David, made mention of these. Those at the top have all the ideas. They operate as though they have all the ideas, and they make all the decisions, which are then handed down, and then we are told, this is all we have money for. So what are students seeing? We're seeing concrete being lifted up to be replaced by concrete. When we don't have computers in the classroom, to carry out our work. I am an adjunct in the Africana Studies Department. I took a handout to the secretary, a one page, on, on, on Tuesday morning. I said I need 50 copies of this for my class, which is on Wednesday. He said, cool. So I went back on Wednesday morning before my class. No one was there. I did not have the handout for my class. I turned back, I turned up after my class, to be told that the head of the department said that we are not supposed to be doing photocopies for the classes, that these are supposed to be put on blackboard for the students to copy. Now, is this the kind of education, the kind of university that we want? How are we going to de de deliver education as teachers in such a climate? These are the ethical issues, the ethical constructs that we have, that we have found ourselves in. Faculty says nothing about these issues. They hand it down to us. They are the business managers of the corporate university. And this is across the board. 